Hello, Math Study students, and welcome to an online lesson. Today we're going to be talking about using derivatives to find equations of a tangent at any point. Uh, in class previously, we had talked about tangents and how they are a line that passes through exactly one point on a curve, like such. We figured out how to find the slope of these tangents because the slope of this tangent is the slope of our original curve right at this point, so we use our derivative. But we still want to be able to write an equation, an equation of a line like a tangent might be like y equals mx, whoops, mx plus b. And uh, so that's what we're going to look at, writing equations of lines for these tangents. All right, so to start with, we're going to review finding slopes. Slope throughout this chapter is going to be a derivative. The way we find slope is using derivatives. Now you can find slopes again using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 or by using rise over run for simpler problems. But when it's complicated problems like x to the fourth, we need to use a derivative. So if our original function is y equals x to the fourth, our derivative of that function, which I could express dy over dx, or just y prime, would be equal to bring the 4 out front and lower the exponent. So there is my derivative. Now, um, actually they were using f of x here, so I'm going to use that notation as well. So f of x, so this would be f of x here, and this would be f prime of x. Well, f prime represents my slope, and I want to find the slope when x is 3, so I'm going to take that 3 and plug it into my function. So f prime of 3, which means the slope at 3, is equal to 4 times 3 to the third. Again, it's just this expression, but I plugged in a 3. Following order of operations, 3 to the third power is, well, 3 times 3 is 9, times another 3 is 27, and then 4 times 27 gives me 108, which is a very steep slope. So when x is 3, my slope is 108. And we could do that throughout all these problems. Again, it's the idea of plugging in. Let's skip over to this one here. Do a quick bit of practice here. We need to rewrite this function with a negative exponent. So f of x equals 6 times x to the negative second. Now we can use our shortcut. So f prime of uh, x is equal to negative 12, x to the negative 3. The problem is I don't like that because I need to plug in a number and I, you know, want it to be in a way where I don't have to look at negative exponents. So I can rewrite that as negative 12 over x to the third because there were the opposite of 3x's getting multiplied, so they're being divided. Now I can rewrite this with my x being 2. So I'm going to do f prime, which again means derivative, which means slope. So my slope, when x is 2, is going to be equal to negative 12 all over 2 to the third. Now it would be great if 2 to the third was 6, and then it would just become a negative 2 slope. But as we know, 2 to the third means 2 times 2 times 2, which is the same thing as 8. So negative 12 over 8. Well, we can reduce that. What goes into both 12 and 8? That would be 4. How many times does 4 go into negative 12? That would become a negative 3, and 4 goes into 8 two times. So my slope is negative 1.5, or negative 3 halves. So that's the first part we're going to need. Now, uh, just a quick little bit of review here. Give it a line with a point negative 1, negative 4, and a slope of 3. Well, we can graph that. We have negative 1 and then go down negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that'd be this point right here. Slope of 3, that means I rise 3, so up 1, 2, 3, run 1, rise over run, and that would give me another point. And then again, I could continue that pattern, 1, 2, 3, run 1, so on and so forth. Up 3 over 1, up 3 over 1, or I could go down 3 and to the left 1, where they're both negative, which gives me the same thing. If I connect all those points here, I should have a nice straight line. And that would be the line that has a point of negative 1, negative 4, and a slope of 3. Now, what would we do if we didn't have the graph? 
uh, how could we write an equation for that? Well, based on what we have right here, we could look and we can see that we have a y-intercept of negative 1. So if I'm using the form y equals mx plus b, m we know is my slope, and in this case my slope is 3. b is my y-intercept, which is negative 1, and y equals. So that would be the equation of this line. Again, I used some information from the graph, such as that y-intercept and then the slope that we had. But what if I didn't have the graph? Could I still write this equation? And the answer is yes. We have a formula that we learned back probably freshman year, hopefully reviewed several times since then, and it's called point slope form. And I would put it along with the quadratic formula and the Pythagorean theorem is some of the most one of the most important formulas that you learn throughout high school. Um, and so this formula looks like this. y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. All we need to plug into point-slope form is exactly as the title says, a point and a slope. Now remember, a point always has two parts, both the x part and the y part, and then of course their slope. So, I see that I have a slope of 3, that replaces m. m always means slope, so I put a 3 in there. The x without the subscript stays where it is, the y without its subscript stays where it is, and then in the y sub 1 and the x sub 1, those are going to be my x and y values. So, I had minus negative 1 as far as my x goes, and then minus negative 4 as my y. Now we can simplify this. Two negatives become a positive. So that happens both here. So I have y plus 4. It also happens here. So I have x plus 1. Technically, this is an equation of a line, but we don't like how it looks most of the time because it's not in our standard form or slope-intercept form. So what we're going to do is we're going to distribute. It takes two steps here. 3x plus 3. Bring everything else down. And then to get y alone, I just subtract 4 putting it with the other whole numbers for constants, and I have 3x minus 1. And that is a way that I got this equation using this formula without needing to look at a graph. And that's the equation we're going to use, point-slope form. So now let's get to our actual learning intention, which is writing the equation of a tangent line. So I've given a function quadratic function because I see that it has an x squared, which means I know that the graph is going to look something like this. And there's some value where x is 3 and there is a tangent line. I want to know what is the equation of that line. So in order to write an equation of a line, I need two things. I need a point and I need a slope. Well, looking at what we were given here, we weren't actually given either of those things, but I was given an x value. An x value is not exactly a point, but it's part of a point. So I know that I have a point which has an x of 3. I just don't know the y yet. And then I still don't know the slope. Well, in order to find slope, what do we do? We do derivatives. So I've got a y here. I'm going to make it y prime and do my derivative, which becomes 2x plus 2 in seconds. Now, that's my general derivative function. I want to know the specific slope when x equals 3. So I'm going to take this x equals 3 and plug it in here to find my slope. And y prime then equals 2 times 3 plus 2, which becomes 6 plus 2, which becomes 8. And instead of calling it y prime, if I want, I at this point could just call it m. That's what I'm looking for. My slope is 8. Once again, in order to write the equation of a line, I need a slope, which I now have, but I also need a point, which I only know part of. The part I know is x. I still need y. Hmm, if only I had an equation that gave me a y. Well, look right here. y. My original function is what gives me y's out. My derivative function gives me slopes out. Well, I don't want to plug this into the derivative function because I already have my slope. I want to plug it into the original equation. So I have y equals... Now, that arrow might be misleading. I don't really want to plug my x into the y. I want to find my y. Where is the x going to go? Everywhere there once was an x. I'm going to replace it with 3. So I'm going to have 3 squared plus 2 times 3 minus 1 
and that will simplify to become 9 plus 6 minus 1, which simplifies to become 14. So when x is 3, y is 14. Am I done? No, I haven't actually written my equation yet. So I'm going to use point-slope form. Point-slope form, once again, is y. Now let me do it in a different color here. y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. And all I need to plug in is a point and a slope. My point is 3 comma 14, which has a y value of 14. So I plug in 14 for y sub 1. M is going to be my slope, which I figured out back here, which is 8. My x value uh, stays the same. And then my x sub 1 was this x value here, minus 3. So again, the ones without a subscript stay there. We want to have an x and a y in our final equation. Once again, we have an equation of a line at this point. It just doesn't look like what we're familiar with. So we want to put it in a slope-intercept form. Two steps. First, distribute. So I get y minus 14 equals 8x minus 24. And then I want to get y alone, so I add 14 to both sides. And I get y equals 8x <laughs> minus 10. And that is my final equation of my tangent. Let's recap. What did we do? We needed a point and a slope. We knew part of a point. It was this 3 right here, but we didn't know the slope or the y value. To get a slope, you plug your x into your derivative. To get a y, you plug it into your original function, usually labeled as y. Once we have our point and our slope, we plug it into point-slope form, simplify. It's always two steps to simplify. One is distribution, and the other one is moving uh, the y term to the other side. Let's do one more. Write the equation of a tangent line that passes through this equation. Now, this equation is a cubic. We know that because it's got a third power here. So this is going to look more like that, more crazy function. But again, it's a curve. It has slopes. Um, and we're looking for uh, the equation of the tangent when x equals 2. Again, we need a slope and a point. Just like on the last one, we know um, part of the point, but we don't know the y value. We can start either way. This time, let's do it backwards. Let's find our y value first. Again, we just use the original equation to find the y value. And so y is equal to our x, which is 2 cubed, minus 2 times our x, which is 2 squared, plus, again, our x, minus 1. You notice I put a parenthesis everywhere. There used to be an x in this original function, and I replaced those x's with 2's. Now I can simplify, so my y equals... 2 cubed, which is 8, minus 2 times 2 squared, which is also 8, plus 2 minus 1. Well, these 8s cancel out, leaving 2 minus 1, also known as 1. So my ordered pair is 2, this is my x, which they gave me, and my y is 1. Again, I found that by plugging it into the original equation. Remember, we're trying to write the equation of our tangent line. We need a point and we need a slope. So far, we have our point, we still need slopes. So let's do our derivative. y prime is equal to 3x squared minus, we bring the 2 out front, there was already a negative 2 there, so that becomes negative 4x plus 1, and our constant goes away. Now we're going to plug in the x value again to find our slope. So our slope is going to be equal to 3 times our x value of 2 squared minus 4 times our x value of 2 plus 1. Simplify that, becomes uh, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12, minus 8 plus 1, which simplifies to become 4 plus 1, or 5. So I have a slope, I have a point, let's use point-slope form. y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. Oops. Uh, so my y sub 1 is this y right here, 1. My slope back there, it's a 5. x minus our x value of 2. Go ahead and simplify now. So we distribute the 5. We get 5x minus 10. Bring everything else down. And our last step, we get y all alone by adding 1 to both sides. So y equals 5x minus 9.
Then our goal today was write equations of tangent lines. We need two things. We need a point and we need a slope. We get the point by plugging the x into the original function. We get the slope by plugging the x into the derivative function. Uh, and then we use point slope form. A few problems we can take a look at on fi page 578. And until next time, have a good one.